I'll read uh, a version of what you said. Quote, the main reason this Hamas attack is happening now is because of the prospect of the U.S.-Saudi-Israel deal. Hamas understands this is a huge transformative event, and they're trying to create a circumstance where it'll be difficult for Saudi Arabia to do it right. End quote. Uh, given your extensive experience, as, as noted, at the table, including trying to broker agreements with Palestinian leadership, uh, what exactly do you mean by that? And are you positing um, that Hamas, with its brutality and terrorism, is trying to do something that would uh, undercut or hurt potentially what's in the interest of at least some other elements uh, of the society and the population in, in the territories? I think there are two factors here. One of the things that Hamas understands, if the custodian of the two holy mosques, meaning Saudi Arabia, the leader of Saudi Arabia, the most important Sunni leader, 85 percent of all Muslims are Sunni, the most important Sunni leader makes peace with the nation state of the Jewish people, you are taking a significant religious element out of this conflict, or at least you're greatly reducing it. Hamas needs to keep this a religious conflict. When you're talking about a religious conflict, there's no compromise. When you turn it into a national conflict, you're able to find uh, ways to compromise and end it. So on the one hand, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia breaking through with Israel is an enormous transformative move psychologically and even religiously. On the other, you create a network of states tied to Saudi Arabia and Israel. These are countries that are advancing economies, digitally based, building for the 21st century, capable of coping with the challenges that food security, water security, uh, health security, uh, cyber security, all the things related to what we're seeing when they range from, from climate to health, these are societies that want to be resilient and successful. And the contrast of these societies with Iran, with Syria, with Lebanon, uh, where Hezbollah is, where Hamas is, they represent only oppression and failure. They offer nothing for their publics. Creating what is a very successful alternative is the worst thing in the world for them. It further alienates their own public. It makes it harder for them yeah. to maintain their control. So they saw yeah. this as I'm a only threat. The Iranians saw it as a real threat. Understood. And that's so important. I, I'm jumping in because we've put aside the time. But my last question to you is about another facet of this. Um, there are those who are concerned or are critically raising the issue that if Israel under Netanyahu and this unity government goes forward uh, with a major and sustained attack on Gaza um, that involves heavy, heavy civilian casualties, that... Uh, however much they say is a, is a, a security decision at this point, um, also sets back everything that, that you've been working on and talking about. What, what do you say to that? What does it mean, in your view, to have a proportionate response to what you earlier condemned, the, the barbarism and the, and the terrorism? I guess I'd make a couple of points. First, I don't know what proportionality is when you're looking at people who come in and, and decapitate babies and mow down civilians and make it clear that Violence will always be their tool. I don't know what proportionality is when it comes to that, number one. Number two, there is going to be an unfolding tragedy in Gaza. We already see it. But Hamas is the one that produces. They bear responsibility, and we shouldn't lose sight of that. Number three, were Hamas to win coming out of this, then the whole rejectionist ideology that they represent, this coalition of what the Iranians like to call the coalition resistance, this coalition would gain enormous uh, momentum from an ideological standpoint, the ability to say, our way works, you see? Don't go the way of those who are prepared to negotiate and make peace. We need to have Hamas seen as, as losing. The price here is terrible, by the way. The price for the Israelis will be terrible as well. But we cannot have an outcome where Hamas looks like they were successful and they can do this again because it will have its reverberations throughout the region for a long time to come. And the possibility of breakthroughs then will disappear. And I think right now, that's not the case. I think that we can come out of this in a way where Hamas has been fully discredited. It's what it stands for has been discredited. And those who want a different future will have a, have a real potential. I wouldn't write off a breakthrough with Saudi Arabia sometime when this is over. But certainly right now, mm. I think it's on hold.